Hey everyone, welcome to video number two. Um, it is 9.30 at night on Wednesday, so I'm gonna hurry and do this video. Um, I wanted to talk about what led me to start thinking about uh, weight loss surgery. So basically, I've kind of already talked about in my last video introduction, um, kind of my history and why I'm where I'm at now. Um, I cover PCOS and the diet plans that I've tried and kind of my history with weight gain, weight loss. So you can look at that if you want a little more information. Um, I started hearing it. Well, I've heard about weight loss surgery for forever. I feel like it's been in the media. People have been getting it done and it's kind of been out there for the last 10 years, I would say. At least that's kind of how I've been aware of it. Um, and so I, yeah, that's kind of been, it's kind of been on my radar. But it's not anything that I would have ever thought about seriously doing for myself. Um, I kind of looked at it as people who have a lot of weight. Um, they're the ones that usually do it. And, uh, and honestly, people don't usually talk about it that much. It's not, it's kind of like mental health. It's just, it doesn't seem like it's something people want to talk about. Um, and I can talk about this in another video, kind of some of the, sorry guys, some of the, um, I don't know, insecurities about weight loss surgery. Um, so yeah, it, I don't know. I don't know if it's because people feel like it's cheating, but it just doesn't seem like people talk about it a whole lot. So I have noticed though, I would just kind of in my head register like, oh my gosh, these pers this person has, sorry guys, I'm going to fix this real quick. Okay. It's a little bit of a different angle. Um, <laughs> I don't really like this angle either. I'm just going to hold it. Sorry if that is um, shaky at all. Hopefully not. So I, um, yeah, I would just kind of notice people would drop this insanely amount of like a ton of weight and it, it just, everyone would be like, oh my gosh, I didn't even recognize you. How did you lose all that weight? And the responses didn't really make sense to me. It was kind of like, oh, I just stopped drinking soda. And it was kind of like, huh, wow, that's crazy. Um, I didn't really think anything of it. And then um, I noticed that with certain people, and I think just recently people are now talking about it. It's a little more acceptable to talk about things. We're not embarrassed or ashamed of, of, you know, mental health issues or surgeries or, you know, in the day and age of social media, it just seems like we're a little more of an open book. Um, so now more people have started talking about it. And I started noticing that these people who would drop this massive amount of weight and it would stay off, it, it wouldn't bounce back. A lot of them started to come out and say, yeah, I had weight loss surgery. Um, so that kind of piqued my interest a little bit. Um, with my history of yo-yo dieting and talking to a lot of people who yo-yo diet, um, it just, I over and over again with myself and other people would notice that they would lose quite a bit of weight and it would come right back because a lot of times these eating, these extreme eating lifestyles aren't sustainable. They don't stick. It's too hard to be consistent with them. If you top that with um, an eating disorder or with a food addiction, it makes it that much harder. And so for me, I'm dealing with a food addiction of um, sugar. My body just wants and craves sugar so much and I stress eat and I'm not consistent. So I'll go some days without eating all day. And then I eat everything in sight at night. And then other days I'll just binge eat all day. And so... I feel like my body probably doesn't even know what's going on with it. It has no idea if it's going to get food, if it's not going to get food. Um, so I kind of have a lot that's going into this crazy schedule. Um, 
crazy schedule, blood sugar issues, um, all of that. And so I just, I had just hit, I, I've just recently hit a wall and I'm, and I feel like I've done everything. I've tried everything. I'm dealing with PCOS. I'm dealing with this food addiction. It just feels so impossible now. And I started seeing these people and I just felt like all these people were starting to be successful and I was just feeling left behind. I was feeling unsuccessful and I would keep trying these things and then it would come back or life would happen and it would come back or um, a stressor would happen in my life and I'd start binge eating and eating sugar again and it just felt so hopeless and it really just got to the point where I decided I'm just going to be this way the rest of my life. I'm just going to keep putting on more weight and put on more weight. And that's just my life. I just need to find a way to be okay with that. And um, I, I'm just, I look in the mirror and I don't see me. And that's hard because um, on the inside, I feel like somebody else. So, and so there's that, there's that part of it where I want to feel good about myself. There's a part of it where I want to have the energy to go play with my kids. And, um, I've heard people who their depression and anxiety got better with this. My blood sugar is an issue. My high cholesterol is an issue. And the more weight that I put on, the more health issues I'm going to have. So I really did start seeing this as, as, um, weight loss surgery isn't cheating at this point for me. Not that it ever is cheating, but for me, it really is a medical issue. So if you have a medical issue, why, why wouldn't you get the surgery you need to help? You know, um, obesity causes so many health issues and the studies that I've seen show that it it reduces your quality of life and it reduces your lifespan. So why wouldn't I do something that could really, really help that? Um, I'm trying to go into weight loss surgery realistically. Like this is not a fix all. Um, I've researched what weight loss surgery, what types there are. And so the two types that I found that are most common are going to be gastric bypass which basically means that they reroute how your body, like where the body, the food goes in your body. Um, so it bypasses the stomach from what I understand. Um, so it's kind of moving organs around a little bit. It's a little more invasive. Um, the side effects that I've heard of are um, you don't absorb nutrients as well. Um, that you can have acid reflux with it, uh, vomiting, um, dumping syndrome, everyone's side effects are going to be a little different or their, how their body adjusts, adjusts to that is going to be a little different. The one positive thing I read about that, that I, that I actually liked is that it's reversible. Um, you can go in and you can reverse it and put everything back to where it needs to be. They don't remove the stomach. Um, the other option, which is the option I'm leaning towards, is called BSG gastric sleeve. Basically, what that means is they're going in and they're taking a portion of the stomach out. They're not rerouting how the food goes through the digestive system. It's still going to go into your stomach the way it usually did, and it's going to leave the stomach the way it did. It's just that your stomach is smaller. It's a sleeve now. Um, the side effects, the most common side effects I've read about are going to be... Um, that, well, obviously you can't eat as much food, so you can't shove your face. If you do, you're going to be really sick. Certain foods don't sit well anymore after. So I've heard a lot of people that can't eat sugar or ice cream. A lot of people have issues with bread, with dairy. Um, so what you can tolerate kind of changes. They talk about dumping syndrome, basically, where if you eat too much or you eat something that your body doesn't agree with, it sounds like it starts coming out both ends. Um, anyone who's been on metformin, I don't know if it's similar, but I've experienced what sounds like dumping syndrome. So with metformin, it's a medication for people with diabetes and PCOS. So if I eat something that is too sugary, my body will go through what I would assume is dumping syndrome, meaning I'm on the toilet, stomach cramps, in pain, and everything is just 
going out that end. <laughs> like it literally just dumps everything. So that's not too different than what I've experienced in that sense. It does sound like dumping syndrome VSG with the sleeve is a little more extreme. It sounds like it could come up the other end too, where you're puking and you have diarrhea. Um, so that might be a little different than what I've experienced. Um, technically with PCOS, I shouldn't be eating a lot of bread. Um, dairy, that's going to be a bummer. We'll see. Um, I'll miss cheese, but I can live without it. Um, and heartburn. I don't experience heartburn now. I did with pregnancy. So I hated it. Well, hopefully heartburn's not an issue. Um, from what I've read is that you can help eliminate that or reduce it where you don't lay down after you eat. You have to eat food and wait a few hours, it sounds like, and then you can lay down and go to bed or lay down and rest. Um, I'm trying to think what else. You, you, From what I've read, you don't have issues with malabsorption because most of your nutrients are going to be absorbed um, after the stomach. Um, and so there's not a huge issue with that from what I've read. Um, so that's good. I didn't want to alter how my body absorbed nutrients. And so from what I've read, I feel pretty comfortable with, with the gastric sleeve. So gastric sleeve also, um, it's, it's not as invasive. Um, and so I, yeah, I just feel better with that route. Although my big hesitation with that is they are permanently removing part of your stomach. You're not going to get that stomach back. Um, and even then, I've read that your stomach will sometimes stretch a little bit. And I've read that that may not necessarily be the case, that it can stretch a little bit, but really not as much as people think. Um, so it's kind of permanent. You have to... You have to be committed to it because you can, it can change permanently the rest of your life, the way that you eat, the way that you look at food, the way you consume food. It is a lifelong commitment and that's huge. So that's why I think, that's why I think U.S. clinics require that you go through the process of, you know, talking to a therapist, talking to a dietitian, you know, because it's not something you just want to decide overnight. Oh, I'm going to do this and then go remove part of your stomach. So um, that's kind of where I'm at now. I've pretty much decided on the gastric bypass. Um, the next thing to do once you decide on which, which type of weight loss surgery, the next thing to do is decide where um, and figure out insurance and how to pay for it. So Video three, I'll kind of talk about that a little more. So that's kind of how I figured out that I wanted to do gastric sleeve.